Hello again, this is Richard. It's the 29th of February 2009. This is the next stage of my conversion from my petrol powered 2 ohm 4 Rover to fully electric power. As I said earlier, I've got a few other things on the go at the moment, but I, so I can't really go hammer and tongs at this car at the moment. But I've been um, sort of sourcing a few bits and pieces, having a bit of a play the last couple of days. So I'll show you what I've been up to. I've now received the vacuum pump, which is this little gizmo here, sitting on top of the battery, which will help me get the vacuum that I need for the power brakes. I'll just touch this on here. As you hear, it obviously works. 12 volt DC, came from America, cost about £95. Uh, I've been looking, after, looking out for a few fittings, as you can see I've got a couple of fittings in the end already. They're going to help me plumb it into the chamber that I'm going to be using because um, I was originally going to tap it straight into the servo but don't think I'll have enough volume for vacuum brakes because obviously in normal driving it's using all of the inlet manifold space for the vacuum brakes as well so most people tend to go with a, with a small canister like a MIG welding bottle or such like to use as a more of a vacuum reservoir so these are the pipe fittings I'm going to be using I've also sorted a few more as well uh, hopefully one of these two pressure switches over here, one on the left being off of a full Fiesta, the one on the right being off of a Mercedes, will allow me to control the vacuum pump by monitoring the pressure in the servo or in the reservoir tank and then turning the pump on and off. The pump itself only takes 4 amps, so it should be pretty safe to run without using a relay. Uh, obviously it is quite noisy. So it's more like a rally controlled car at the moment, petrol car. <coughs> so I'll probably be putting that in a box somewhere with maybe a bit of foam and a bit of some rubber mountings. There's a bracket on the back of it already, so you can mount it onto rubber. So that's going to be put away for now until other things start happening. What I've just been doing over the last sort of half an hour is taking apart this oil pump that went on the original motor, the second one, sorry, that I've taken out now, the one that's got a little quick rotation, the 18 kilowatt motor, 72 volts, that I'm likely to be using. This is a bit I'm interested in at the moment. It's the original shaft that went between the motor and the pump. As you can see, it's got a T way on the end. Help me that out. And this piece here, is what fitted, fits inside the motor shaft. Uh, it's the opposite of what you'd better find in a middle of a clutch plate. And that obviously is clued onto there. What I'm hoping to do now is to use this end, obviously with the steering nut and washer, to go in the end of the main motor drive. And two choices really, either get this cut in half and get it secured to one half of a larger coupling. The new bit obviously can go in the gearbox, yet to be looked at, so I don't know what fit I've got on the gearbox yet. But obviously some sort of something like the spline on the input shaft of the gearbox. Or well, the other option is to just basically get this end altered to go straight into the gearbox. But obviously that's two different choices we've got at the moment. This is the bits for the pump up keeping at the moment. This is the bit that actually bolted through the end of the motor, so it gives me some nice mounting holes I can use here if I have to make up a adapter plate, which I obviously will have to at some stage. The other thing I've been doing is playing with the MR2 power steering pump, which we've got here. Basically I've just been making sure that it does work if I put power to these two contacts in here, obviously positive and negative, by the red and the blue, or red and black, and it doesn't seem to need this plug to work which I'm assuming is a pickup off of the steering wheel for the MR2 to tell you what speed you're doing or how quickly you're turning the steering wheel. Obviously I won't know fully yet until I actually get some fluid into it and get it plumbed in. It's got two connections on it, obviously one here and one here, which is the same as the peasant pump that's on the electric car. So the return for the rack goes back into the storage chamber, so one feeds into this 
pump from the storage chamber and presume me that one probably feeds out the rest itself. As you can see the tile is still in one piece. That's the motor I'm probably not using, as the other one's still present at work at the moment. Star the car is still all together. Uh, it's not a bad interior. Cold cigarette burns and we would expect from a car of its age. I'll get in here in a minute. It does still run. Well, what I have noticed is that the fan never turns. Which is probably the reason why the head gasket's gone. Uh, obviously, it makes it nice and easy to keep it mobile at the moment so I can move it around. Try not to put too much petrol in it, always get some so you've got to take the petrol tank out, which will save me having to carry too much weight around. Can't wait to get started on it. First thing will be obviously to take the engine out. Been looking around at some sources for batteries at the moment, but obviously, until I know exactly which motor I'm using. I obviously can't commit yourself to the batteries and obviously if you haven't sitting down too long it doesn't do me any good and so I'll be leaving the batteries till later on certainly until I get the original engine out and look, start looking at the adapter plate as to what sort of size the batteries are going to be been looking at running some of the other equipment that's in here that I should be able to get rid of we've also got the power steering reservoir here which we'll be staying Radiator bottom will be going, obviously the radiator down the bottom. Part of the fuel system all over here, obviously brakes will have to stay. Window wiper motors obviously have to stay. Obviously majority of the fuses will have to stay in circuit. Obviously the uh, most of the engine management system can come out. So I'm hoping to uh, better get quite a bit of weight out. I looked in the manual and realised that this vehicle, the particular model, it's a 1.4 injection, can take about 1400 kilograms. Presently weighs, I think it's about 950. Um, so obviously once all the engine comes out, it gives me quite a bit of space to put weight-wise to put some more weight in it. Uh, what I might do in a minute is to actually measure the height of the flat bit of ground from the bottom of the wheel to the top of the wheel arch, obviously both front and back, and thereby once I get the weight in the car, I can work out how much lower the suspension is and whether or not I need to fit any suspension assistance, which I'm obviously hoping not to have to do due to the time it'll take to do it and additional finance is required for that. Uh, presently arranging to try and buy the two forklifts fits officially now at work for minimal fee, so I can then arrange to get them scrapped and recoup the money towards some of the bits I bought already and some of the things I need in the future. That's it for now. I'll sign off now and hopefully be able to do another video soon of some more bits and pieces.